Here we are, one minute before the second race of Thursday night uh, racing. Okay, I uh, went and moved the weather mark slightly left. I think the gates are fine as far as position, a little tight, but uh, they'll probably be spread out. 59, you want to, um, if you're worried about people, you want to slow down and duck, duck behind 68 before 57 gets the overlap. Ah, uh, too late. So now, maybe 57 needs to get uh, punched through you. Oops, I'm tripping again. All right, and now you're pinching. So uh, 59, come down. You should know that you're high on the line anyway. Okay. Um, so there's no reason for 59 to be over. There's nobody pushing them over. Okay, so I don't know what's going on here. Okay, uh, can you reverse? All going forward and, and turn right. Okay, uh, yeah. All right. Nobody's over, okay. Uh, which tells me everybody's late. <laughs> There's no 59 had no worries because the boat below them to Lewitt never took them over, right? Um, don't expect the starting lines to be that way. There'll be people below you pulling you over. Okay, I'm nervous because it almost looks like a righty, but it's not. That's just a bit more wind. The boat's heel over. It looks like a starboard lift. It's really not. Uh, so uh, that buoy's nice and square here. Okay, uh, 55. Or, or, you've got... We want the main trim um, a little tighter than that. And then Sonny, you want. So they've got uh, not enough main sheet on, okay? Uh, great for light air. All right, uh, they look like they've got a boom center because the traffic is all the way up to windward. Ooh, they hurt me. They just trimmed in the um, the main a little bit. Okay, we can get it in a bit more, okay? So today's not the day to have a traveler that looks like 55s, okay? That would be a, a, that'd be a light air day, right? We've got, uh, we can go with, with, and also the main isn't up all the way because you shouldn't have that big of a wrinkle in your Cunningham. Okay, you only have to barely pull it on. You want to keep a little speed rake on it. Um, so, is, I'm gonna have to, I, I can't tell if that's uh, it's the Fox or not. Okay. Uh, no, that's John. Okay. So John might have a little bit too much wrinkle. Again, the main might be down slightly. Okay. But we definitely want to see some of those. Uh, we'll call them speed wrinkles. I am glad I moved the. Uh, Okay, uh, I'm glad I moved the uh, buoy left, because look at the uh, lefty shift now. So, um, okay, uh, Peter, forward we go. This time I want to be the offset while they're rounding. So we're going to be careful not to throw people awake. So get ready. Throw, uh, yeah, don't go any faster than this yet. Until you pass 61. And then speed up. And watch out for... Yellow boat 52 tackle. All right, fast, go. Right up behind 69. Well, that's good. No, that looks good on the board. And now, turn right, follow 59 so we don't get 50. I mean, uh, follow. Follow spirit. Okay, slow down. Okay. All right, everybody's going our way. Our wake won't hurt them, so you can speed up slightly. All right. All right, sorry for the extra coaching there. All right, back to coaching sailboat racing. Okay, look at the great boat go. Ooh. <laughs> I spoke too soon. All right, why did 67 tack there? Who is that? Is that Ned? That is Ned. Ned, why did he tack there? It's like nothing left of the left side of the race. Okay, you go into the four tack top of the morning, you gotta come back on four tack. What? what? No, it's too short. No. Take it over here to the buoy, okay? Watch what happens. He's done, instead of a one tack finish with the he's now gonna do a three tack finish. Now, if I thought there was current relief over there or something, that'd be different. So, he needs to prove me wrong. He needs to have a wind up lefty where he rolls off the of 68 to 57, and then I'm gonna sound like an idiot. Oh, wait a minute. I go by, you know, the averages through the years, through the races, through a series, okay? When you're already on the left hand side and there's almost nothing left of the corner, to 
back, back over to the left-hand top of the corner. It's scary. Okay. So you've got to have a really, really good reason. I don't think he had that. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think he would have been ahead of 68 of the Grey Bodie anyway. I'm not sure of that. Okay. Uh, but I do know they'll be coming back on, um, on starboard here. Okay. So uh, no gain there uh, for 67. Okay. Uh, and just, uh, uh, you know, it's only a difference of attack. Yep. If he'd gone straight, all right. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That would have been a single attack, yeah. So at the very top of the bead, calculate when it's worth, um, you know, not not going too far over and having a single tack instead of a triple tack. Particularly when you're kind of going to end up coming in on board. So that's scary. All right. Well, uh, Ned made something back up here because the gray boat here, uh, they just um, uh, dug here, uh, overstood. Okay. Um, so there's... Um, Right, and now he's an inside boat. Can we get room? Yeah. Yeah, okay. And now we have room. Okay. But you know, um, so worried about, oh, oh, they're okay. I was wondering whether they had forgot about their spinnaker in the Ned boat uh, because they're so concerned about this Grace wanted to win. Okay. Uh, Lars rounding fourth. Did he win the first race? So likes that boat. Likes that boat number. And look at him go with camera on you. I should pan out a little bit. Oh, my cannon. Oh, boy. That's the third time I saw a spinnaker hourglass and it spun freely really quickly. Let's see what happens with 59 as well. Oh, no such luck. Okay. So Cam's uh, still got a little twist in his boat. Racing class having half decent beats. They're, um, you know, beating half the fleet on the first weather mark. That's pretty good. Boy. Tom's already got the kite up. Beam reached with the kite up, so he's doing the right thing. He's blowing the sheet off. Okay, now push the pole forward. Come on, Tom, push it forward. All right, fly a kite. All right, nice. Uncle Sarah's got a good popping, good crew there. Sarah, Sam, and whoever else is in there. Um, okay. Um, careful. Um, Bill, your pole is too far back, Bill Cook. So the spinnaker can't fly. Come on. You should have a crew that knows that by now. Push the pole forward in 58. You're killing me. I can't watch. Let's look at something else. Okay. Oh, don't miss the buoy there. I don't know what, what happened. Okay, we're going to go forward. Right straight forward. Forward in front of... Okay. No, too late, too late, never mind. Okay. This is the last time uh, that I'm going to be talking to you while I'm videotaping. Because uh, no one needs to listen to that. Okay. Okay. Right. Now we'll go forward behind the red boat and let's go catch the front. These guys, I'm sorry, if you're in the back of the pack, you're going to get less, less film of you. <laughs> okay. All right. 62, um, boy, it's just not quite enough breeze at the moment to win. I, oh, it just got better. But earlier, 62 was trying to wing. It wasn't quite enough pressure, so they had to heat it up a bit. Looks okay. Uh, now, you really, really have to get that clue low and out. Jib clue low and out. It's just not out enough. And on these cell tacking jibs, it's very difficult to do that. The Liberty Clipper and the Liberty Star. Which one's faster? The Liberty Star is smaller, and of course it's way faster. It's much lighter, less sail area, but uh, this is the star here. I thought it was Wednesday nights that the Liberty Clipper and Liberty Star race each other. And of course the little guy wins all the time. 68's already around. Okay, that would be Jim Petapa with a good lead there. I think he was what? Second? I forget, I think Jim was second or third at the weather routing. Um, if that's the case, he caught people downwind. Ah, there's a decent port tack lift. I don't want any more from you, Jim. No more port lifting. Because that means I'd have to reset the course. But what do you know? He's the first boat around. He's on a port lift. 69 is on a um, starboard header. Ah, uh -huh. and just as uh, Jim um, got up, I won't say... Uh, 
it didn't chip right, it just went square. So Jim's doing the absolute right thing here, come across, loose cover, stay between uh, the fleet and the mark, right? You can't cover everybody, but we got a loose cover on 69, and we'll watch 57 if they scoot out there. If, um, if Ned scoots way out to this corner, we want to look and see if there's any, this is something he sees that we don't see. Um, I don't see it. But, of course, he's not off the race course yet. If I'm Ned, I go straight to give this guy fits. All right? Um, because the worst is probably going to be third anyway, right? Okay. So he can afford to uh, get a little extra lateral separation. But right now, boy, that angle is not good. It's funny. He's not even at an angle that Jim's on yet. Okay. What do you think about the Jim? Maybe that's a little too full there. Okay, on snow, maybe that's just a little bit too full. Okay. 59 is looking good. 57, check out what 59's doing. Think about it. Uh, now we're chasing the breeze. You're on ahead at 69 on the other side on a lift. 59's on a lift behind you here. I would have flopped. Uh, I would not be, um, I'm, it was all set when he came over here to the right side. I agreed. But it's not working. Why are we sailing a a head attack through the middle of the race course, the worst thing you can do, you know? If you're in the middle of the race course, you got room to either side. Oh, great, now he gets lifted. Imagine if we attacked earlier and taken the stop and lift across, got headed, and then we tacked onto a, um, I'm sorry, try that again, the port lift across. Uh, imagine if we get taken that port lift across and then poof, we got headed, then he could tack onto the stop and lift. So anyway, uh, that righty came back just in time for Ned and 67 to get over the top of 54. I'm sorry, of 56 and 64, 57. All right. Jim Platapar in the 68. Uh, over his back shoulder. 69, Lars. That's right, what, did Lars around first? Yeah, I think so, okay. Well, it looks like he's going around first again, okay. Uh, it doesn't look like he's overstood there in the 69 boat. Jim looks fantastic, pointing well. Uh, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe Laws is overstood a little bit. We'll see. Okay. Uh, Ned's looking good again. Oh, he's flying now. All right. So it looks like the first, second, and third are fairly set. 56, probably in fourth, but 64 is going to give them a run for their money. All we need is a little bit of a righty at the top. Okay, oh, pop. All right, yes, Lars is going to hold on to the bullet here. Ooh, a little bit more lefty coming in. All right, that gives 56 a little, a little bit more. Excuse me. Uh, anyway, 56 should wind up a little bit more and get a little bit closer to 64. Pretty important that 64 nails calling a lay line. Okay, uh, so let's see how Tom does. Okay. And then, boom, there you go. Travel it back up to windward. So the boom sits center. And you cannot stick it. You did the right thing by tacking where you did, but... Unless the breeze goes right, uh, you will not be beating 56. Uh, now is not the time to squeeze it. All right. Oh, don't let that jib. Don't pitch that jib for 64. Uh, we've got current pushing us backwards, right? Um, 57 looks much faster on port than 64 doesn't stop. So now we're just stalling it out here, all right? So, uh... I, I'm not sure I would have raised and got the pole up that soon. And all I did is stack, distract the skipper. And they're going to have a heck of a time making that mock now. Okay, so let's see. Uh, the boats have good momentum. If you wait, 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 and then shoot. Oh, he'll make that. Just dump your jib. Red boat, 60 board, ease your jib out. Okay, and there you go. I see that luffing jib. It's working, it's working. Yay! Apparently he nailed that lay line. I know he didn't because early he was squeezing up and stalling the boat out and just letting the, the fleet catch up to him. So, um, 
I think if you just uh, not mess with the pole yet, concentrate a little bit more on sailing a, a, a perfect close off angle, all right, uh, I don't think we would have stalled out quite so much. That's the problem. Once you do pinch, the truck stops, it's hard to get it going again. So don't let it stop. Don't get distracted. Don't let it stop. Right there, you can go. Okay. Uh, these two have to know they're ducking. Okay? Now, April might make it, but the first thing they can duck. <laughs> That's the first thing you think, not tack in front and foul. Then you rethink it and say, oh, maybe I'm okay. So, uh, by all means, uh, April was fine on Darren there, no problem uh, tacking in there. All right, um, this is Jason and uh, Davey and, um, and Jay. Jay is now on the pole. Jason's driving. Okay. Ooh, a little bit of a low. It's, uh, I feel bad for these guys. They get a low and they get a, um, a bit of a wave and the boat just stops. Um, we just got to get uh, Richard more on the breeze. That red boat there is close reaching. You're not close hauling because you haul your sailing close. You also have to turn and use your tiller to stay on the verge of a luff. Head up if you think you can. Telltale luffs to windward, they're off a switch. All right. Great. I'm not going to turn this video camera off. It's easy to edit. Just put it all on there, as long as I don't swear. All right. Great. Again, careful. Can we get it again, Bill? Somebody's bringing the Spenica pole back. Like we're running free, but we're not running free. All right, and now the kite has so much trouble filling because it's filling uh, inside out. Yay, it's working now. Okay, uh, yellow boat there. All right, um, they've got their pole too high. Uh, the breeze is a little bit lighter. You know, the general, the general idea is keep your clues even. Okay, when wind's light, the spinner gets down low. Keep your clues. That's the, the general. Okay. More specifically, you hear people say these uh, fancy, fancy flying sailboats, you're going to race them. Then if we want to be even more specific than that, we want to try to get that, um, the leech there, windward leech, you know, that would be the guy, okay? Uh, you might even call it the lop of your spinnaker, to break high and low at the same time, okay? Now, I could tell you which way to bring the pole up or down to make it break but I'd like you to experiment on your own. It's not hard to figure out. Okay. So, um, in general, clues are even. Um, um, if you had an adjustable ring, it would be lower in light air, high and heavy if it's really high. Uh, and you're up there, well, heck, we're probably not even flying kites because it's too windy. Okay. But uh, clues even first, and then fine tune it. My pole goes up or down slightly uh, based on the braking uh, evenly upper and lower of your spinnaker luff. Yeah. And the luff's of course the windward side that has the pole. Uh, the sheet that has a, a spinnaker pole on it is called the guy. Alright. 57 reaching up. Is it too much for Grace Wander? Okay. Doug, are you going a little bit too high? Well that's a little bit... Oh, okay. So we went high, then we bore off, and then we jibe. Um, So I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we saw something off to the left and said, oh, wait a minute. I was wrong. It must be off to the right. But anyway, right now, um, I think we need that boom out further on 57, the gray boat. I think we might want to adjust after the, the jive. I think the breeze is light enough to have a, a little bit of a more of a heated up angle come out of the jive. Okay. Um, but it happened. Grace Wander is now moving again. All right, if you're on the starboard jibe, all right, and the breeze is light, you're probably going to be finishing at the pin end. Right. So, right. All right. How's that breeze? Pretty good. And it's not even raining yet. Okay. All right. And uh, one last coaching thing for the driver. Yeah. Don't ever slow down unless you warn the person in the boat. Because okay. that's how people fall out of the boat. Okay. So I tell you when I speed up, I tell you when I, uh, okay. 
Except that uh, earlier today, I don't think I told you when I sped up. You didn't. <laughs> I just did it. Since you did it because you're used to being on the boat by yourself. I am. I'm not used to having company. All right. Okay. Nobody wants to hang out with me. I talk too much. All right. So uh, I'm sorry. That's two finishes that I haven't been right on the finish line to get those tight finishes. Okay. But you live. So here we go. Two races under our belts. They were twice around. All right. We'll certainly get another one off. And that might be it. We'll, we'll see how we do it for time.